looking into the next week's picks and bats and adapt. Start winning those things out. Soraka, they open up the picks and bans by taking Aurelia away. Vladimir will be the first follow through on the side of Origin. Yeah. See what they decide to go with as the timer keeps on ticking. They've got plenty of time on the board, actually. And there's that Braum ban away. We didn't really expect anything else. And Hybrid will start to have his champion pool chipped away at yet again. Swain will follow through. So Origin, they're really focusing on those mid laners, the kind that Rocket are really bringing to the party. Yeah, Betsy is known for his Swain. Plays it a lot still in solo queue. Vladimir is just a really strong meta mid laner all around. So definitely going to see that more band on the purple side. It is definitely first pick worthy. Uh, Rise coming out as a lost band used to be the tier one band. So these bands from Origin aren't really a surprise if you look at who they're playing against and who one of the strong performers on the side of Rocket is. That's very true. So, with the Bard Braum band away, we'll have to see Hybrid trying something else different once again. The Trundle is actually the first pick choice for Rocket here. We've been seeing a lot more of it up in the top side as of late, but it leaves up the Kindred available. It's instantly picked up by Amazing, and they decide to grab the Karma for Hybrid. Yeah, so as we were talking about this, this matchup in the top lane, Perang versus Soaz, they now secure themselves a really strong individual trader that can then play on side lanes and leave Rocket to play at least a 4-1. Also have the option to go into a 1-3-1 with the Caitlyn Gragas pickup, so uh, Rocket definitely have some options available to them. Origin, they secure the Karma support early. It's technically a flex for mid lane. Uh, I think it's a champion that Power Eagle could play. Um, but they don't really give away too much in their first rotation. No, they definitely didn't give away all that much. And, you know, not hitting the jungle, I think, makes a lot of sense, even though when it was Origin shining last week, we saw them with amazing on picks like Rek'Sai for the most part. Untouched this pick and ban phase. The Kindred still has a huge potential to do a lot of damage. Even though the changes had have come through, I still think it's really smart for Rocket to snap up the quick Caitlyn as well. Yeah, Caitlyn is just a really strong AD carry in, in, in this patch. Steelback fits his style as well. You know, we meme around it, you know, uh, clean up AD carry, but he knows how to position well in team fights. And this combination already sets up, sets up for such great siege comps. Go to the mid lane tower, a couple of traps on the left side, a pillar on the right side, have zone from Gragas ulti, and suddenly the tower is just free to take. Yeah. Well, when they've been winning those team fights, Rocket haven't really had steel back touched a whole lot. So, yeah, you can talk about cleanup, but it's really the fact that no one's able to get to him. He's able to put out the damage constantly. That being said, Peke does get himself the Ash, so he'll be able to compete at least some of the time in range. And a Poppy for Soaz. We saw a little bit of that last week. Yeah, we saw a little bit of a Fizz Hover, which would indicate that Rocket wants to play a 1-3-1 there. But then they realize maybe it's a little hard if Power People just locks into Victor themselves, goes for AFK Wave Clear. Um, definitely Victor will be would make this comp a lot easier to play. Um, the Janna Caitlyn is a strong lane. There's a little bit of an issue, however, in the mid game, Rocket will be forced to group, uh, definitely around the mid lane turret very early. So if Origin can keep the wave clear there, somehow uh, they can make Rocket lose gold because Caitlyn doesn't really want to stick on a side lane too much in the mid game. Neither does Victor want to go there. So Rocket definitely looking to group uh, in the mid game for, for a little bit of a skirmish and then a CG. See if they can get themselves a little bit more power and not have to wait until the late game when they really start to shine. But they have some scaling available on that side. For Origin, though, this is when we finally get to see Power of Evil on what we like to call those meta champions. The last time they played Azir, it was when they still had Forgiven and Xpeke was subbing in. Yeah. The Azir, not too desirable from Xpeke. Overall, right now, Power of Evil is going to give it a go. Um, still want to go back to one of the matchups we talked about earlier. Soaz versus Amazing right here. Poppy, with her many, her many nurse right now, is just... It's rough to lane into Trundle, so we may see that lane swap come out here from Origin. Mm -hmm. Well, and even if we don't, we can possibly look forward to seeing a lot of amazing camp up in the top side. But all the same, Parang's had a lot of trouble himself. We'll see if the matchup is all that's said and done for it as Grabs and Nico the Pico shake hands, walk off the stage for this game number one. I have a feeling it's going to get a lot more explosive, a lot quicker than Rocket are happy with, though. Yeah, I mean, this game can go off at one point. Like that, That's the beauty of the, a lot of these Ash picks. Mm -hmm. If the guy, if, if Pekka gets rolling on his Ash and he lands a couple of arrows, he can snowball. But if suddenly Rocket has good fundamentals in terms of vision, we may have a bit of a snooze fest too. Well, it's always possible. But what do you guys think at home? Keep tweeting us up. Hashtag ROC win if you think Rocket is going to take away number one. Or if Origin are going to find themselves a win here in this week number three. Hashtag OG win. We're about to find out. We are loading up onto Summoner's Rift for this first game in the LCS arena to open week three of the EU LCS. All right, teams getting ready for the ever so standard fan out the line of scrimmage. No, no mods like to indicated. American football. That's my favorite. Nope. There's, I mean, there's a lot of other football going on right now. That's exactly. Sure, it's the wrong kind of football, Pyra. Oh, I wouldn't call it wrong. I just call it uh, left. There's a right. 
Left football. <laughs> well, they do use their left feet oftentimes. That's what I did because I'm a lefty. But enough about me. We're looking like we're seeing standard lanes so far so good. One small difference, hybrid hanging a little closer to power to start things off. And let's talk a little bit about the summoner choices. Origin have gone a little more side pressure oriented just because they've got the mid lane teleport available. Betsy has gone for, uh, I don't really know if you still call it that, but I used to like to refer to it as the Dade summoners. The Ghost and Flash, oh. a lot more individual mobility. Yeah, Dade, uh, for example, the TF2 used to run that all the time. So um, I like Ghost Victor. I think it's a little bold, um, a little bit a little bit of hubris in there. But it, it can definitely shift the swing of a team fight when Victor has a lot quicker pacing and can allow him to land a second laser Q combo after the ulti. Especially since he's building Violence right now. Oh, yes, indeed. It's going to be... Uh a little bit hard for power to deal with, however, the Azir range is pretty long. We just have to ask a lot of those questions about how power is going to handle the Azir because he's focused so much on those picks, those particular picks, the Syndras and the Orianas and things like that that we've criticized him for so much in the past. And taking a step out of the darkness here and see if it's going to be the right one. Yeah, Ray's going to sniff out what's happening on the top side of the map, finds the lane swap. The way they invade, it seems like Rocket wants to swap away from this Karma Ash lane, not deal with all of the poke that comes out. But yeah. that does mean that they put Parang into a lane swap situation and he can't exploit the poppy pick of Soas. I think it, despite the Janna Caitlyn lane being pretty, pretty powerful in general and just bully potential, they're doing quite fine by swapping it because it frees up Raze to just get this harass on and slow down Amazing and Soaz getting the jungle buddy system. And we're probably going to be in for the Oso standard three on three tower trade, but. Uh. Yeah, in this situation, slightly better execution for Origin. If you look just at their champions, AoE on both Soaz, uh, Xpeke, and Hybrid. Yes, there's Tornado and, and Caitlyn Q, but Jungle doesn't fare that well since the auto attack reset no longer affects towers. Um, this is a matter of seconds. However, the whole you know spiel about how tempo plays in and factors in used to kind of culminate later in a Rift Herald play uh, on the end of the second phase of the lane swap. Right now, because Hi Rift Herald is very undesirable early game and takes a long time to take, is actually not as important. Uh, because of that, lane swaps have the tendency to become slightly more dull. Yeah, and yeah, that's just kind of how Rocket likes it in the early game anyways. They've said themselves on several occasions, they know that they're Early game isn't always where they're at their strongest. They know that they don't necessarily have the right presence. You know, if you look to back to last week, some of the times they were getting caught out, they were having a lot of trouble. You gotta really look at the jungler too, not to point the blame exactly at Airwax, but he did get caught in a lot of really wonky situations, trying to dive a little bit too far, just being out in lane after these fast pushes and just not getting anything for it. So Tower will take a little bit longer to trade on the side of Origin yep. as we bring up the Keystone Masteries. No surprises there. Everything else pretty so standard, but a little bit extra gold into the pocket of both the top laners just to start to spiral them ahead in this game. So as still taking some time as he gets the wave bounce. Finally, the buckler shot will do it. Yeah, the wave bounce for Soas here. So a little surprised that they're slightly quicker. And we need to see right now. There's no ward in the lane here for Soas, which means he has to back off earlier uh, from his farm. Um, if there was any catch and rocket, luckily for him, Janna Caitlyn just going to do the standard pathing, expecting there to be a ward. Uh, it's this war that we would be talking about at the other side of the map right now. Because Xpeke and his support are revealing themselves. Now, Parang knows exactly how much time he has, how much threat there is on him, if they're ganking him from a side, or etc, etc. Now he can figure out, can I get the extra CS or not? It's these little things that matter in these lane swaps. Uh, both teams uh, respecting the boundaries. Yeah, no massive difference to start it off too much. Power Revival does have a slight CS advantage over his opposite number. We haven't talked about the mid lane just because when we have those lane swaps, you know, all the minute details are happening in the top and the bottom. Airwax is actually moving a little bit farther into this jungle, and when you see a teleport as the reverse lane swap is starting to happen, amazing. He's going to be able to get out of dodge, but Power and Betsy decide to trade the 1v1 a little bloody there. Yeah, good trade here from Power, and good that Amazing finishes his Wolves, because he takes something away from the strong side of the map from Rocket. Rocket now have divided the map in this phase of the lane swap. Uh, we take right side, you guys take left side, but Amazing managed to steal a tiny bit of, you know, experience and gold away from the right side of the map, leaving more camps available on the left side of the map, or a gank in mid lane. But, he sniffed out. Yeah, just gets himself nice and spotted. Betsy still saving both of his summoners, even though he's a bit low on health, even lower on mana. Hawkshot comes out. It's not gonna see a whole lot, but we'll get to trail off for a while. And the dragon actually does get started here by Rocket. Not the most desirable dragon, but there's nothing else that really bears taking on the map at the moment. No, they do it after the tower. So we've seen some teams try to like speed up the game by doing both dragon and tower at the same time and then get contested. Rocket taking the right approach right here, and Ocean is actually surprisingly decent yeah. in the early game. Like, because there is, you know, regeneration out of combat, and you 
very rarely are in combat in the early game, so you can go for a skirmish back off and regenerate in the lanes. It's a good point. It dies away from Origin. The next dragon, you saw just a moment ago, will be in Infernal. We'll expect to see a lot more action dedicated towards that pit for a little while, but yeah, you're saying that the, the dragon, the early take, the teams are still trying to figure out exactly how they're going to be doing that. We've seen a couple of interesting champion choices in that regard. Spirit has been tunneling on the Kha'Zix, as Sifa was saying on the desk. He can actually kind of get his solo on. We know Elise kind of has the Spiderling tank mm -hmm. and can get that kind of stuff done, but teams are just starting these little tricks and trying to outsmart each other and make sure the mental game is a little bit stronger here. But everything in this game, so far so even with the small lead that Rocket have accumulated on the back of a Dragon, but the gold differential is actually in Origin's favor. That's just on CS though. Yeah, game is even. Right now, this is where we come out of the lane swap and decision making will matter. So often do we see to bot lanes meet 2v2 in the bottom, but Rocket very adamant at switching around the map left to right all the time. And if you look at the CS, and the experienced Parang is trailing ahead of, of Soas, and this is surprising. This is something we've seen in the past when Origin were a very bot lane centric team. Sven was the one always getting ahead, but in this particular matchup, you would expect them to funnel more resources into Soas somehow. Uh, this is a bit of a product of the tempo advantage that Rocket had earlier, though. The quicker yeah. you take your tower, the more advantage goes to your top laner, and the more of a disadvantage goes to your AD carry. But still back. Did a phenomenal job CSing, and he's actually even with expecting. Yeah, he actually goes for the fast Urker Greaves too, and we're seeing that a little bit more and more with the changes that we have on 6.11 to mm -hmm. these Swifty Boots, not quite as valuable, and now he just gets a lot of speed early on. Hard to catch him out, and still back knows how to stay safe on this Caitlyn pick. Yeah, attack seed Boots, definitely a, a damage amplifier for Kaelin with the headshot passive coming out uh, more often then, as well as just you need mobility in lane subs. You don't want to spend your time walking around. Uh, aimlessly, so the, the quicker you walk, the better in lane. That's why some AD carries went for early Swifties. Think about Callista, you know, picking up a first item Swiftness boots back in the day, and people were like, why are you doing that? Right now, with the nurse to Swifties, we see the pivot to the Zerker Greaves. Yeah, there's some weights on him on that patch for sure. Uh, amazing, just trying to clear as much vision out on the bottom side again. They just keep trying to trade out towers. Parang's having a hard time holding this one. A massive wave here with Peke and Amazing backing it up. He does manage to grab himself a cannon creep and gets his bite on as well with the help of the Tiamat. He's clearing them away. Still, half the damage already dealt to that tower, and it really hasn't been returned by Rocket up in the top side. But it's not as big as you think, because right now Rocket is swatch, uh, swapping their bot lane into the original location on the map, and they will easily defend that tower from going down. It's all our eyes should be on Parang and so us and how that works out, unless we see like a cheeky pick or an arrow from expecting to come out. Speaking of arrows, we've got one just whipping. I was going to say, the utility that Ash is going to bring at level 6, we might start seeing a few more scraps, but it's not going to happen just yet. Still some time before the dragon's going to spawn, so Origin, while they may control that side of the map, there's really nothing they can get off of it at the moment. Yeah, so us taking his uh, sweet time, pushing out the top wave. But they're hoping to catch here. Oh, maybe just take the red buff, never mind. Yeah, aggressive contest here from Origin, playing strongly on two sides of the map right now. Yep. Race is going to maybe spot this one out, and Power will manage to get a shuffle. In comes Peke. A lot of damage being dealt. Both summoners by Betsy Pop. They just need an auto to do it, and it's Peke that hits him with the arrow. Yeah, you have to wonder what Rocket is doing. They're getting invaded on the right side of the map. They're getting picked off in the middle, and Origin is farming uncontested in the top lane all at once. What is Rocket doing with their time? Fast rotations, but Rocket, we know that they've had trouble in the early game. It maybe looks like they're just... Being lackadaisical, not responding to the origin threat, and that's going to be a thousand gold edge to OG. The next dragon will be in, you know, three, four minutes. It's still going to be a little bit of time, but origin are running the side of the map at the moment. Yeah, Rockcat, I find your lack of proactivity disturbing, honestly. They really need to improve that if they want to step away from being called just a late game team. Yeah, let's watch take a that look again. at how that happened. Peke's waiting very patiently in the bushes, but a nice shuffle from power. Instantly the volley, he gets his summoners on, but that's about all she wrote. And that's honestly, Betsy also disrespecting Power Reaper. At that point, you have to respect your opponent that he has a follow-up for that play, and you just gotta preemptively flash. Um, else you can't put it in that position. They knew Ash was in the jungle. They knew somebody could join right there. And not respecting the potential to get involved, so I spoke about that Dragon Timer. It's only a minute and a half away. Still, Rocket have done a good job of clearing the vision out in the wake of that misstep and trying to close the gold gap. Still gonna be some time here. The map is in position to be influenced more now by Rocket, though. Look at the top wave that they have parked in front of their tower. Parang can push that out and make the timing coincide with the dragon spawning, having pressure in the top side, and forcing Soas at least to expend the teleport if he wants to join the fight. Let's see if Rocket's macro is good enough to make use of that pushing top wave, or if Parang kind of gets lost in the rotation down the mid lane. 
Well, it might happen. We've seen it a couple of times. Still on this Trundle pick, he hasn't had too much trouble this game with the non-standard start, or non-standard lanes, I should say. He hasn't had to worry about being camped up, and he's actually still kept that lead over so as in the CS department. 45 seconds on the next Dragon. Betsy, lacking those summoners, might be a little hard for them to contest, but Origin have actually opted to go very quickly towards this Rift Herald, and they're burning it down. Yeah, and this Rift Herald has an influence when Soas will be playing 1v1 versus Parang, but in the ensuing Dragon fight, we may actually have an advantage here for Origin because the time, uh, for Rocket rather, because the time Origin is wasting right now, Rocket is spending on, you know, kind of controlling the map and setting up for a potential Dragon. Look at the vision that Aerox is getting right now. They traded left side versus right side, and that's obviously going to pay off in a potential good Dragon fight here for Rocket. Very true, very true indeed. However, Soez will have a little bit more uh, durability from the Rift Herald buff to be able to deal if he gets into a 1v1 situation with Parang, even though he can steal his stats away. Dragon hits the Rift in just a couple more seconds. Airwax Rays, Betsy trying to set up a trap here, but Amazing is wise and sniffs it out. Yeah, and especially with the traps now from Kaelin that can kind of supplement this Warline already, uh, eliminate one of the choke points. It makes it very easy for Rocket to predict where the enemy is coming from. Okay, if we have to teleport here for Parang, they really want this Infernal Dragon. Oh yeah, teleport burn, that's the only one they have on their side. Power of Evil did not have his available. Dragon's already down to half his health, and Amazing actually gets caught. Ace in the hole, he throws down Lamster Spike, but he's the only one in it right now. Hybrid around the side trying to help with the Chaos Storm. He's gonna zone them all away. So has in power trying to chunk from the side. Dragon has been abandoned, and Rocket are running around like headless chickens. Yeah, Rocket over chase instead of turning to the Dragon, and then solidifying that choke point with an additional trap. They have a really good start of the play, but they follow up rather poorly. Yes, indeed they do. So the Dragon gets stopped for the time being. Origin maintaining this gold lead now can get a few more pot shots on the mid turret. It's being pinged for help, but Power is the only one there for now. Still, the map looking like it's being controlled better by Origin, despite the fact that they looked zoned out of that Dragon Pit. Yeah, and that was a bold move from Origin to contest it in the way they did. Uh, a better team would have punished them harder and definitely uh, made them lose a lot more in that play. And we see another time, you know, time and time again, Rocket's weakness is in the early game. They set up these plays. They had nearly perfect vision. They had one choke point they eliminated. They had all the tools and all the information, and they still botched the play. Still troubling signs for a team that has not just admitted, but everybody at this point knows that they're having so much trouble in these early game scenarios, playing with late game champions as well. Steelback, Caitlyn, Betsy on this Victor. They have the later game Trundle, but still, Origin, they now have the opening and they go ahead and start this dragon. Look at how fast they're able to take it down. It's going to depend on no Miracle Steals because there's no jungler in the area. Steelback would have to just get a headshot and he can't do it. Yeah, they're looking for the Tornado and Caitlyn Q combo there, but it was a little bit early. Smite came out later from Amazing, so they secured a dragon. Origin right now did a good job stopping the bleeding. Remember, they spent about 30 seconds taking that Rift Herald buff. That's a 20 minute buff. It's kind of built into that gold advantage well that is going to help Soaz deal with the unfavorable Trundle matchup in the top lane. You know, when we started this matchup, we compared the 280 carries, what they've been bringing for their teams at the moment, and Steelback, you know, clearly looking like the better player, but at the moment, Origin, they've utilized Xpeke, maybe not to the fullest, but he's been around where he needed to. He clearly earned that kill, burning a couple summoners to do it. He's got the level advantage, he has the item advantage for the time being, a full BF sword ahead. And Origin are just in this early stage of the game, looking like a better team. Yeah, and I just really like Origin's awareness of, of neutral objectives, like, you know, this red buff coming up on the side of Rocket. This is the second time they've contested. One time they initially backed off just a little bit, but they turned that play around into a mid lane gank. By now, they group up with four in the mid lane while Soaz is pushing out top, so... Very much so aware of, of where they are, advantages to be taken on the map, while still respecting the potential damage that can come out of Betsy. Yep, so as you see, we'll have another Infernal Dragon, so it'll be another chance for Rocket to try and contest that. The 8% AD and AP doesn't mean as much in the early game, especially when you compare it a bit to that regeneration, but if this game does go a little bit longer, it's still a feather in Origin's cap, and even though Rocket do like to fight it out in those later stages, Raze is going to have to burn a real quick flash. Traps are plenty in the bot lane, but they still have to burn as many escapes as they can. Yeah. A huge chunk of hope being dealt to the Rocket support. Yeah, you're not going to get through that. Raze very scared to kind of interact with that entire exchange here since he's still level five. Alrighty. So amazing. Roving around, making sure that the vision is secured all across the board. With 15 minutes into this game, it's been a decent bit of action despite low kill counts just because a lot of summoners are being burned back and forth this mid lane tower. Speaking of burn, pretty low after they'd forced Betsy back or rather killed him in the early game. Everything else still 
not too far away from Rocket. They usually fall behind a lot more gold than this, but Origins still look like they have the upper hand. Yeah, this is well within the reach of what Rocket has beaten in the past. I mean, remember a game last week where they were down maybe six, seven, eight thousand gold. They should have handily lost, but then they were handed over the game. I believe it was against Vitality, uh, where Kasin kind of went on a goose chase in the jungle to catch that raise. So Rocket. They definitely know how to catch throws, but if Origin play consistent like they're doing right now, they may not give Rocket the opportunity that they're looking for. And Rocket definitely a team that is thriving off of the opponents making those mistakes. As things continue to move forward, Origin, they still maintain this gold lead. It's about a thousand and some change, but neither team really having too much direction in trying to grab those objectives since only the mid-outer towers are the ones that are remaining in the wake of the early game push back and forth. Yeah, if there's a victor involved and a couple of hours fall, dragon's not up, there's generally not much going on on the map. There's a lot of lasers and a lot of dead minions. That's about all you can say. But speaking of minions, the 10 CS advantage is actually in Power of Evil's playbook right now. This is here. You know, he's only seen one big play this game, but it has already started to look a little bit better. And we have to wonder why Power of Evil hasn't picked these champions up sooner. I mean, he's, he's, very, he's shown a, very, a large tendency to champions that he prefers playing. Also has shown in the past of issues adapting and also we can't really judge this matchup because you can play anything into a victor early like victor's not going to win a single lane in the early game his strength comes out later uh he can wave clearly and you can push him in he'll farm another tower but um i don't think it's a grand feat just winning lane by 10 cs against a victor that's a good point they haven't managed to knock down the tower yet uh, rocket will knock down the ward but they get airwax and raise spotted as they all coalesce trying to move together here Top laner and ADC on opposite sides trying to clear waves and keep pushing away, but it's under siege at the moment. Rocket are trying to see if they can grab a little bit more damage on it. Power hybrid and amazing all here to defend to keep clearing things away. Yeah, keep clearing things away, buying time for expected to farm on that side lane. Ash is an AD carry that definitely needs some items to get going and fight. It's amazing. Oh, no and saw that. Finds out right, made that wall just a little bit thicker without telling anyone. He's got to keep, uh, he's got to not skip the late day, man. He'd be able to get a little higher on that. It's important. You don't skip like day. day, do you? Nope. Good. Today was like day. Ow. But I'm really glad I'm casting in the arena, <laughs> where we have chairs and we can sit down in the slower parts of the game. Have yourself a seat, relax a little bit as the uh, slow mid-game phase continues. Just the way Rocket likes it. It's really in their playbook constantly. We haven't seen as much innovation out of them, but you know, it's only been two weeks. Eight games seems like a decent amount, but that was the old LCS format. Yeah, no, eight games is, uh, that's definitely the, the advantage from this new format here is just larger sample size allowing teams to improve more rapidly a lot of pings flying here there's a crystal arrow it's gonna knock on to betsy he's got both his stomachers oh, he but popped. he's not even gonna be able to use them amazing gets popped into the tower but he's got a lamps respite just flashes over the wall rocket tunnel onto him and they can't get any more damage yeah another great kill. escape from amazing on the back end of that play and no hesitation on the follow-up for origin again showcasing team play right now one of the factors when expected came in that was mentioned by hybrids like yes he may not be the greatest laner but he's adding a lot of synergy communication and team play and finally it's coming to fruition here for origin but honestly a fantastic early game so far they grab themselves the tower they got another kill just under 20 minutes they're starting to rock this lead there's another dragon available it's infernal and it's only half a minute away let's take a look at that play one more time yeah take it with the great hour you need to get it to betsy and this is where we can wonder should he have went from dali to just more uh, a more passive approach, you know, getting the cleanse. And the fact that Amazing makes it out here, also due to the heal from Expected, because Amazing flashes over with, before Lamb's Respite ends. He didn't get the heal from it. Because everybody is ready to kind of deal the damage right after Respite ends with Traveling Autos. So he flashes right before and gets the heal. Uh, again, just marvelous escape. Yep, focusing as much as he can just to get himself in and get himself out. With the quick damage origin, we'll find another kill this time. One on the support, one on the AD carry. Of course, Karma support, you know, it's, it's, it's a champion that you can definitely expect to start picking up a couple of stray kills just because of how much staggering damage she really can output on few items. Yeah, she has a really early spike in damage and then she shifts completely towards the utility roll right, right now. She just wants to slow people down as the Origin have. Double pink ward, one on either side here. But they get forced out. A lot of zone control here on Rocket's lineup. Pillars and choke points, traps. Victor with the ulti and the E combo, so definitely need to be wary of that if you're Origin. They're likely just waiting for another arrow opportunity on the main wave clear target. They want to get to Betsy. Should be their playground. Rocket in the choke points. Peke though, he's able to clear out the vision. A momentary lapse in judgment is really all it takes. Sends a volley flying now. Rocket 
They're grouping together, but they're not getting a whole lot done here. Yeah, they're slow, but they know if they get engaged on, they have counter engage with Gragas Flash. And they find Peke. Chaos Storm will finish the job. Now they look for Power of Evil, but a great Emperor's Divide sends them back. And this is Expecca's mistake, because he already recognized that was a play pattern that could happen right before this. You saw the little pause when he was approaching Airwax, and Airwax was kind of be a Okay, I don't want to overextend for the error right now, but expect it as he stepped in, he realized that E-Flash was a possibility. That's why he stepped back. But seemingly, he forgot about that just simply two seconds later. So it's very uncharacteristic for a player like that to get cut out in full vision when he knows it's available right there. So that's a major mistake from XPK and Origin as a team. Yeah, costs not only a kill, but it costs them the Infernal Dragon. So Rocket have managed to match on that front. Yeah, because what, what's this guy? Again. Right here, right here. They're pacing like... Uh, it was actually right before this phase, so if you could go 10 seconds back, you could see it, but there was a phase very similar where they were on maximum distance of each other, mm -hmm. and he was recognizing the threat of the Gragas, and then he stepped forward anyways, trying to step and enter the zone. And Rocket, they play very well in a death ball comp. Any Victor comp just performs very well in death ball comps, especially if you can layer that with like aggressive engage like a Gragas Trundle, and then Janna for the reset. So it's really hard for Origin to find a way in there, unless they arrow somebody and pin him into the wall and one shot. But later in the game, they'll actually have to focus their attention on doing that against Raze. Because if you go on any other target, Raze combined with Airwax will just reset the fight. Time and time again, yeah, they do have a lot of disengaged tools on their side, and Origin will have the job cut out for them as the game chugs on forward. Rocket, as a team, they've had obviously really, really long game times, but Origin, they've actually had the longest average. You know, they 40 minutes in wins and their losses, and even though there's a lot more in the latter category, it's probably, because they, it's probably because as a team, they have the fundamentals of stalling down, but they're not good enough to get ahead. Yeah. And sometimes you see with a lot of these struggling former good teams, it's like they can stall out a game when they're losing, but they're missing the key plays to consistently get ahead themselves. This game it. notwithstanding, of course. Yeah. Most teams are getting ahead of Rocket in the early stages, but you know, kudos on that play to catch out Peke and, and realize what the weakness was. It just starts to showcase the difference between those two 80 carries. Yeah, and expect he going for the Runan's IH combo. Uh, Tabs tweeted a little bit about it too. How he likes to get Infinity Edge after Runan's as opposed to Essence Weaver because then you need another 3,600 gold before you really hit your spike. And uh, for Steelback side, he's gone a much more safer route, picking up a very, very quick QSS after the BF Sword yep. and Runan's combo. Basic amounts of magic resistance, good for a lot of these teams charging in. Also getting out of stuns like Soa's stun, you know, um, the arrow, uh, catching him astray, allows him to play a lot more aggressive and in turn deal more damage. So while this is a defensive item, it allows more aggressive posturing, which could result in a, in a damage gain overall. So for our origin, now, we know they want to try and push this lead a little further forward, but they've still got some late game power in their playbook. What is the move they really need to make right now? Where do they have to focus around the map? I think right now they just should prioritize Baron Vision, and that's what they're doing already. Look at the two pink courts set up, because you're not going to siege on a Victor anywhere. He's quick enough to uh, recognize where you're going. Origin are also playing a 4 1 composition or a 1 1 3. A zero always wants to be in a mid lane. So it's very easy for Victor to match the stronger siege. Go wherever the four-man combo is and then just wait there. Unless he gets arrowed. Just like that. And in goes Power, shuffling him back over the wall into Soaz, pinballs the Betsy. And they've got just enough damage to take him out. Yeah, they really need some lane wars to see these arrows coming because Rockat, their main defense against Origins grouping is the wave from Victor, but this is already the second time that Expecta finds him with an arrow. And it's the third time he's gone down this game. All three of the deaths that Origin have managed to grab kills for it's all been off the back of Betsy. No flash available for him in that entire playoff. Yeah, and look at the player camp too. He knows, you know, that this is probably not the way he should be playing this game. The cleanse would have really helped here. Oh, in a definitely. lot of situations. Should have ran cleanse by all means. There's no need for ghost against this composition. Yes, it's fancy when you're winning the team fights, but when you're a team that struggles in the early game, you give up map vision and you get these fog of war arrows. Like this is where you need lane wards to spot it coming out sooner so you don't have to react point blank. That's a big old hitbox, and yeah, Betsy had absolutely nowhere to go. Soldiers take him down off the back of that one. So Peke's gotten some free time up in this top tower. Actually, he's going to run into steel back, so the wave cleared away. But as you said, the Baron Vision, the keeping on it right now, a little bit early to try and take it out themselves. But another catch like that could really change a lot of things and start the Origin Snowball rolling downhill. Yeah, they need to find that ward in the pit, though. So they did the right approach, where it's like if you have one pink ward to place, place it outside of the pit, but then use your sweeper to go into the pit once, and once that's clear, they can't get anything else in there. Oh, they're gonna teleport in on this. Yeah, because they denied all the vision. They know everything else is clean, and this is usually where you go for a bait. 
You can expect Rocket to expect the bait here, but Origin pulling the trigger immediately gives them a free Baron. This is fantastic shot calling. One, two, three, just like that. And they send an arrow flying right out the gates. It lands on Betsy again. There's again. the ghost, but nowhere to run. Amazing takes him down. That's the fourth time this game. Fourth time Betsy falls. Three hours at least that I remember. And Rockat just doing absolutely nothing. Resting on their lowers, just completely negating the early phase of the game. And this is going to be a major issue for them to split. Big swing for Origin now. They got the Baron. They got Betsy. They got themselves a tower. And with the empowered minions, it's a struggle to set up the traps for Steelback. So Boaz just doesn't even care. He's going to walk right all over him. With the Janus shield being worn away, it's only a matter of time, it looks like, on this turret. Yeah, turrets being seen to careful. Obviously, expended a lot of cooldowns. Betsy's up in 10 seconds, so they have a lot of gold in their pockets right now if you're Origin, but I really like the shift on Expect it too. They wanted to put him on utility AD carry since he's a weaker AD carry player, so they tried Sivir. But Sivir's short range, easily caught out. Instead, he's using his skill shot talent to just land a lot of arrows, and this is something we wanted to see earlier. Only here, is where the arrow kind of comes in if you're Betsy and he has a very late reaction because it's timed perfectly with Betsy moving up to the to the minion wave. So not only is that arrow aimed well, the timing of the launch is super important if you're an Ash player. You want to predict enemy movement and the, one of the easiest movements that you can predict is people going for lost hits or challenging a minion wave. So if you can know when they're exactly going to step forward, that's when they lock into an animation or they're tunneled on the minion wave. You buy yourself a fraction of a second, half a second, that you take away from their reaction time. And again, really good arrow from expecting. Similarly, the first arrow he hit in mid lane, again, Betsy was walking up to challenge a minion wave, and he, his eyes were not on the map. They were on that wave. And then expect his strikes with the arrow. It's a game of inches, especially when you can't see it all coming right at your face. Betsy, he's going to have to rethink. Regardless of how this game does shake out, it's still looking in Origin's favor by quite a lot. They're going to have to take a real hard long look at what they were doing in this mid lane. Obviously, Airwax, it's been a non-standard game, so you don't want him to be jumping in and trying to save your life every time. But just the positioning, the choice of summoner spells, Betsy just has not been on the ball. Yeah, we need a, we need a solution. Right now, the problem is already identified. You have no cleanse. So if you're a rock cat, you're looking for a way out. Bodyguard Dragus is one of them. That arrow's going too far out. So that's not going Not a whole lot they can do about it. Uh, aside from Bodyguard Dragons, it's the Mikhail's that's being built on raise. Once that's done, Betsy can actually bait people in. Because engaging on a victor that's stunned, great. Engaging on a victor that sees you coming is going to turn the fight around. Maybe that's what Rocket are looking for here, just trying to find a way to bait, making Betsy look juicy like he has four times in a row. The next dragon that spawns will be yet put him on the spit rose. Infernal. Yeah, put him on a spit and just hang him out in front of him. It's about as much good as he's doing for them right now. Wave clear though of plenty for the rock outside. They are preventing this tower from making a whole lot of damage, but amazing is shepherding a whole group of minions towards mid. And this is why Baron is so important for Origin, because if they have to try and siege these towers like this against the traps and the wave clear of Victor without a 1 3 1 composition, they're not going to breach it. So they will need either Baron's picks off first or Elder Dragon later to supplement their folk. Otherwise, it's going to be incredibly hard for them to open up towers. Oh, this is such an important game for Origin, too, you know getting a couple of ties last week. If they can put this one away and, and be 1-0 and up on the series, it starts to get some confidence back, but they've got to survive first. Peke, the big barrel knocks him into the team, and Parang takes a bite out of him. That'll end that siege real quick. Yeah, suddenly expect it goes flying in, flash up, heal up. We didn't see the barrel coming. He didn't see the barrel coming. But Airwax is pretty happy about that barrel. Happy with that barrel. Yeah, so that's a kill over to Betsy. Gives them... One, excuse me, Parang. Betsy had the earlier one. Let's take a look at it again. I mean, Expecte gets knocked forward. up. Ooh, that's a really nice tornado from Ray's. I like it. The synergy there, too. Knowing that eventually AD Carry is going to walk up and hit the tower again, you know, using predictable movement, bending that into your advantage, and then layering the CC, you know, knock up into knock back. Expecte, wise to not flash um, after the fact. Could have maybe flashed a tornado, but it just gets lost so easily in the mix of things. Uh, we've seen reaction time be a pretty significant factor in these games. And, you know, having a lack of it on a champion you may not be quite as familiar with. Peke's shown some mastery on the Ash in terms of arrow usage. and Turns out this legendary mid laner can land yep. skill shots. Well, he can snipe, but uh, he sometimes gets himself got quite a few times too. Now, one, two, and three, it's definitely not his worst performance we've seen thus far. But it's not all eyes on Peke for sure. The rest of the team has really been rallying around him. Uh, so as we talked about him having a potential huge impact, but, you know, the Poppy choice has been a much more utility-based thing. It's been their big tank frontline. 
yeah, it's been used to chase a few people down, but really, it makes yeah. it hard for Rocket to turn a fight to them. Not playing around Soas. If they're playing around one player at all, full stop, it's actually Power of Evil with a really great CS tool here. 320 at 30 minutes in the game is quite the high CS, especially if you look that there are four dragons taken and contested on the map already. Also, look at how happy these teams must be. This is like the anti Cloud Rake dream. <laughs> You have two oceans, two infernals, and the next one is an infernal as well. Origin gonna look to take one out on the mark though, because they really want that Elder Dragon to spawn as soon as possible. So they have that as another tool to really accelerate their gold lead. Yeah, it's a lot of fighting power if they manage to secure it, but they can also bait Rocket out of their comfort zone. They've been turtling for a little while. They've been trying to save their base. They've really only got one more inner remaining. Uh, two more inner, excuse me, and then their base. And if they lose those, if they get brought into the open and take a fight, I mean, that's it's, it's going to start being lights out real quick. Yeah, and that's also why we have to be really careful when we speak highly of Rocket and how they're doing better. We can't call a team that has this type of play uh, a good team just yet. Middle of the pack for sure. I, I like what Rocket brings to the table, but the way they sometimes give up these early games, make no proactive plays. If you look at the mentality that TSM right now has in North America, like they say they always want to look for the proactive and the aggressive option. If they're, gonna, if they're losing, they want to go down fighting. This is the complete opposite of what Rocket is bringing to the table right now. They're slightly behind the yield. You know what? Take the dragon, take the map, take the vision, take the Baron. And right now, Rocket find themselves 8,000 gold behind just because of that kind of mentality. Yeah, and that's troubling when they're not even... I mean, there's a significant amount of gold behind, but in the early game, we saw the same thing happen, and they just weren't quite on the same page. There still are a lot of holes in this Rocket team. There's a lot of question marks that need filling in. We've seen the potential. We've seen the cap that they can hit. And it is absolutely marvelous. The late game. We've seen their team fights. We've seen the Super Saiyan. We but have. But right now, they're still operating at about a tenth of that capacity. Yeah. Definitely need some more training. Mm-hmm. Need some more time. Well, need to find a super-powered blonde player. I heard Kekis is looking. <laughs> think Kekis uh, definitely will be wanting to be aggressive. Show his mark. Get that Aurelia in there. Yeah, well, we've banned away this game, but we are seeing teams really start to recognize the possibility of that power pick. 30 seconds on this next dragon. Origin are prowling around the backside, looking for wards, seeing if they can clear things out. But Airwax wants to start it. He finds Peke, another barrel, but that's a quick flash, and the Chaos Storm hasn't touched him just yet. Finally gets onto him, and he is down! That chunk was huge. Yeah, this is like the third time Xpeke is disrespecting the counter engage. And this happened last week multiple times as well against mid laners, junglers. He's kind of taking the roles one by one. He's disrespecting every single role at a time, learning how they can kill 80 carries. It's training ground. Still, Origin aren't ready to give up and yield this dragon pressure just yet. Even if they can't fight straight up 5v5, they don't want to give it away without any poke. But the ace in the hole will get blocked by Soaz here. Parang trying to hold the choke point. Rocket are going to try to force this one through with 20 seconds until the Ash respawns. And we have to follow the power of evil in this fight. If anybody's going to swing this fight open, it will be him here. No wall knock. And good traps here on the top side too. This is likely going to be yield unless the jungler gets knocked out here. Poppy Suddenly it's a TV4. This could be free for a second if Origin can get in there and grab it before everything can get said and done. In comes Airwax. Smite it away. He gets back in and slips into the pit. So as now is trapped. The Emperor's divide will end that fight. Yeah, the soldiers block the door there. Airwax gets knocked out. So nope. Body slams back over the wall. Comes in swinging. Smite at 400 HP. Secures the second Infernal here for Rockhead. So they have late game insurance. Uh, Right now, 16% AD and AP. Bonus. 34 minutes into the game. They're looking to cash in on that pretty soon, but, you know, it was tough enough when they were in a 4v5. And we still see the fact that, like, Betsy has plenty of damage and mobility in these fights to get to the isolated carries and destroy them. So if there's a positional error, a lapse in judgment from Origin, they can still go down. Watch this fight again here. Predicted swing here at the, obviously the jungler, and Parang is caught in the mix there. But these traps, they just buy so much time. It's so hard for Amazing to get over. Look at how much damage he's taking while not being able to enter the fight at all. So this perceived turnaround into a 4v3. Hang on, Hybrid. Yeah, we might have another 4v3 in just a minute. Hybrid's at half his health, but he throws down the resolve. It's gonna leash onto Parang. They hit him with the arrow, but not enough damage to finish him off. And Airwax is still in the front line. There's the big ball. Oh, barrel. It knocks in so as. Still not enough. The Chaos Storm's on. That is going to prompt a real quick Lancer spite. Hybrid invulnerable for just a second. Amazing hops the wall. But Betsy with the lasers says no. What a great team fight here by Rocket. The patience from, patience, rather, from Airwax saving his ultimate until later in the fight. 
He didn't want to waste his ulti and then run into Lamb's Respite to turn around the fight, especially since Origin have a lot of continued DPS. Look at how it all starts here. So, Pillar to catch out Hybrid. He has to disengage. He needs a lot of damage here. We have Power Eagle on the side lane. And this shift right here, he goes for a super passive approach into the fight. I don't like what Power Eagle did there. He could have definitely sent out the outskirts, did more damage. Now, Solas gets knocked in. He immediately has to run away. Everybody in, in this fight from Origin is running away. If you look at the way this fight went down, it doesn't look like Origin's playing with a near 8,000, 9,000 gold lead. Some very, just very go in. Range decision making. Yeah, Power Eagle just go in. Press R, get somebody knocked up, trade your life for two players, and start winning the fight. Because otherwise, Steelback is just going to whack away continuously from the backside. Victor has so much DPS in these group team fights. Now they've got to try to make something happen. The gold lead, it's still there, but starting to shorten a little bit. Arawak's to contest the vision. In that pit, they do manage to get themselves a Scuttle Crab. Everyone from Origin is here, but they're not going to start off this Dragon with so many Rocket members close. Yeah, Rocket wise to group. The Mikael's Crucible is finished too. Look at how Raze is always playing behind his front line, ready to insta-cleanse the stun from the arrow. And Speke is looking to not get ca caught while looking for the gap on one of the carries here. Can't even aim for Steelback because he has the built-in cleanse. So it is only Betsy, and even then, there's follow-up from Raze. Starting to look less certain, this Origin team, despite their lead. This game has started to slowly slide, momentum-wise, towards Rocket. They've got the extra Dragon, and that's something you can't measure with the gold count. Soaz trying to clear traps away, but he does take a little bit of damage here. This outer turret has been on the rift for 36 and a half minutes, but no longer yeah. does Rocket make a power move in the mid. And we talked a little bit about zones. So at the start of the game, that's, <clears throat> that's the traps coming out from Steelback. Right now, it's also the double frontline. Parang with the pillar and just being just a meat shield, a body, combined with Arax's Gragas. Well, they move forward. Everybody in Origin has to step backwards all the time, and they can't really use the damage that they have. They have more damage in their team, it feels like, because Rocket, you know, operating with at least two main carries. Origin right now, starting the Baron, teleport comes in. 5,000 left on the HP, and in goes Airwax, trying to contest this one. Can they lock him up? They don't need to. They secure it with the smite. Amazing has the Lamb Dressed on, and they're hanging out in the pit for just a few more seconds. So has Mike trade his life for this one. Peke, he's got the flash available, but he's not going over the wall. Looking for damage on a Parang. Power and Amazing, way too low in the back. They've got to get out of there, and Peke stays. So much happened in this fight. We almost need to kind of watch it again, but the start was a really good ultimate from Soas that forced Airwax to flash over it, so really good reaction play from him. Then, the approach for Rocket was to play for a steal, as opposed to playing for a fight. Watch this again, dodge here over the ultimate, engage, late ulti from Airwax, because he's trying to combine that um, with the steal, doesn't really happen. The lands just buy so much time, but look at the change in pathing here for Parang. He realizes he has to actually go into the pit to challenge Xpeke. This allows Steelback Go for the curve build and then enter the fight again. Betsy comes in from the flank again. So Rock had this burst, but they group again on the central point and take out a couple of players as opposed to endlessly chasing parts of the fight that they would endlessly lose them. Now we're still seeing some parts of Origin not necessarily on the same page despite the securing of the Baron. <laughs> Hybrid just says see ya and flashes out of the pit. Opeke is still hanging there trying to dish damage. So they lose one life, they lose one Baron buff, but nonetheless, they've still got a power move available to themselves for a few more minutes. As the next dragon that comes up will be the Elder. Yeah, Elder. Peke definitely Elder. needs Elder. more zone. Like, this Ash pick on four items with the, some of the steroids that Karma can offer too right now with this adaptive build really needs just help surviving. But if he all, if all the frontline he has is Soas, because Karma can't really p peel for his, or her AD carry, Peke is just going down in this fight. It's fight too, far too quickly. He really wants extended fights where he can continuously DPS a target, especially now that he's finished some armor penetration. He can challenge the front line. And we definitely need him to be able to do it. Still, it's been a very tense series of fights for both these teams. Despite it really only being 5-5, five and five, it doesn't seem like the bloodiest game that we have on record, that's for sure. But both teams still trying to test and feel each other out. There's another one left, still left in the series, regardless of how it goes. But Origin, you know, they've already shown a better performance overall than what we've expected from them. Before Emperor's Divide onto Airwax. Half his health is chunked down like that, but they can't finish the job just yet. Yeah, no one goes down. Looking for Elder, though. Yeah, looking for Elder and looking to keep Expect here alive because Expect here right now, despite only playing five games here in the European LCS, he leads all AD carries of all teams in terms of deaths. So, He's making those games count. Definitely the focal point here 
A lot of teams now. Oh. Power is the focal point. Yeah, he gets chunked pretty hard. The Lamb's respite's on. Look at the damage they're dealing on Steelback. Oh, but they like until Soaz around the backside. And that might be the opening that they're looking for. Rocket are running scared. Hybrid in the front picks off Barang. Airwax belly bops away as he throws out the big barrel. But it's not going to be enough to stem this onslaught. Do they have the damage? Betsy melting away. Amazing hopping forward. Not quite enough, but this is going to mean base. Yeah, this is definitely a large part, if not everything, from this base going down. Steelback, he got soul, but he ran into soldiers instead. Azir here, really strong on that Lamb's Respite. The counter damage was just too high. Steelback couldn't stay alive. No lifesteal, and Rockat, in the end, botched a late game fight, something we're not used from them. And Soaz just helps lead the charge, chasing him down. That's going to end right on the mark for Origin's average game, but they pick up a win here in number one versus Rockat. And honestly, they deserve it. I don't want teams to keep getting away with just a late game style with no proactivity here in the LCS. Origin definitely need to work on shoring up their late game shot calling on some of these moves because they could have turned it around, um, they being Rocket in this case. But in the end, crucial mistake, 4v5. They forced Lamb's respite. So they had them controlled. They just